this is Rita here. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate all of you. Om Kreem Kali Ke Namaha. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It helps me a lot. Don't forget to check out my website, paradoxastrology.com. Book your consultation today. I can help you with anything. And if you'd like more exclusive occult videos that I don't post on YouTube, consider subscribing to my Patreon. It also helps to support this channel. Okay, let's get into this video about Jupiter's transit into Taurus. Most of this is going to start occurring, but very slowly because Jupiter will be combust and Venus will be combust. Jupiter will be combust until June 3rd and Venus will be combust until roughly the end of June, a little bit in the beginning of July. It depends on what you consider combustion based on the degree. So everyone has their own way of interpreting this, but let's just say around then because the depositor of Taurus is Venus. So Venus has to be in a good condition too for this to come out. And then also when Jupiter goes into Taurus right away, it's going to go into the Pada that is Capricorn in the Navamsha. So it'll have the energy of being debilitated as well. So it won't have the amount of strength, but it doesn't mean that these things can't come through because I've seen that in many charts and I've seen that with transits as well, where even if a planet is combust, you can still have really great results. So it all depends on your level of consciousness is how the planets can disturb you or not. It affects the mind. And if you have a high level of consciousness, nothing can affect your mind. And if you do spiritual practice, which is raising your level of consciousness, this is why this helps. But once it's in there and it's going to be in there for a year. So this is actually going to be very great for a lot of people and most of the world actually. Creativity explodes because it's ruled by Venus. We'll have also Rahu in Pisces, which is amplifying everything artistic. This can be from fashion, designers, dancers, actors, beauty businesses, farming, agriculture. We'll have slow and steady growth for finances and wealth as well. Families will grow, diets will change, and longer forms of publishing will be popular, like longer forms of videos. This is also aspecting Virgo. So our ability to firmly analyze any situation, number crunch, and problem solve will be amplified as it's also aspecting K2 and Virgo in Hosta right now, which is expanding profits for some companies by letting employees go because of AI. But this K2 aspect will also expand the interest in abundance for spiritual businesses and also create mass spiritual awakenings. This will also be aspecting Scorpio, which is a deep occult knowledge, revealing secrets and mysteries to us, increasing shared resources, but possibly taxes. It aspects Capricorn, which is giving career growth in many sectors, especially governments. The top CEOs will get raises and some will have the ability to climb to the top of the ladder of their careers and create stability and massive gains for the long term. Roughly after June 24th, beginning of July, Will be the best time after venus has done its combustion now jupiter and critica when it's in critica after both combustions the price of gold will go up as jupiter will end the sun are both carcass of gold depending on which system of astrology you use so this is expanding power and leadership abilities to those in power but also to those who have karma to be a leader so maybe you're not a leader right now, but this could help you in the long term. This is the nakshatra of the sages, the shatarshi, who were the ones who wrote the Vedas and were born from the minds of Brahma. The supreme knowledge and Dharma is what they bring. Much knowledge can be channeled from this nakshatra. For those who are open to the supreme knowledge of the gurus, they'll find themselves having spiritual awakenings. It's not just the followers of Sanatan Dharma who speak of the sages, but also Taoists, also Buddhists, and many other spiritual backgrounds will be doing rituals for this nakshatra to enhance and access information and transform themselves. Remember, the Vedas were written by channeling the information from the gods, and you have the ability to channel this information from the gods or the sages as well. Critical thinking will enhance. People will start seeing the truth. Cooking will become very popular as many will start to be cooking their meals again. Cooking shows will be popular on YouTube channels will gain popularity. 
Some will be eating very healthy, like fruits and veggies and raw foods, but then others will indulge into the worst foods possible, like mukbangs, for example, or large buffets. Fire rituals will become very popular and forest fires will run rampant, unfortunately, especially because this is aspect in K2. But also remember, a forest fire is nurturing for the forest because it needs forest fires in order to nourish the soil so it can grow something new. So even though they're being enhanced by the powers that be, they are a natural part of nature as well. Now, Critica relates to a sense of intimate danger, which can lead to secrecy, seclusion and hiding as a result. I'll have a separate video about this, especially with the combustion when it has to do with the matters of war. Stepchildren will increase, families will increase, many will have children, but also adopting will increase and also surrogate mothers. Extramarital affairs will increase as Jupiter increases desire of Venus and Rahus and Pisces. Critica is also about these themes as well. Now, June 12th, Jupiter will go into Rohini. Now, Rohini is a carrier of all fruits of creation. Its relationship with the ox cart is immediately suggests it has to do with all aspects of agriculture, cattle, involving anything on the material plane that's coming from also the ground. This will help farmers and crops this year. There is a chance that there will be increased abundance and prosperity that comes with this Jupiter and Taurus, but also that inflation can increase. The price of gas, natural resources will increase. We may get more money, but we will also have to spend it as well. This is the nakshatra of millionaires and billionaires. So the rich will become richer and the more luxurious they will become and so will their spending. As I stated, desire will increase and desire for overspending will increase for some. On March 30th, 2025, Saturn will move into Pisces and will be aspecting Jupiter and that's when reality will hit. That's when the karma for overspending may come for some and they will limit their spending. Saturn will also conjunct Rahu at this time and Venus in retrograde, Mercury retrograde Sun and Moon, which will signal a major event for the world that will have to do with money and employment. Until then, the wheels of commerce will turn and signal an upturn for financial dealings. So this Nakshatra is all about creativity, material security, refinement, luxury living, indulgence, idealism and love, beauty relationships. All this will be enhanced. Cosmic surgery will become more popular. Beauty products, car and transport industries will see major profits and gas will increase at this time, but they'll also be seeing major profit. So it makes you wonder. Then on August 20th, Jupiter will go into Magashira, and that means wandering will increase, traveling will increase, exploring, and exploring other areas of possibilities, as in marriage and affairs. This will happen through illusion, through undue suspicion, or plain misunderstandings can make people go outside their marriage. This can also increase because Rahu is in Pisces. Life force and vitality will increase, so will compassion and joyfulness, probably because this is the summer <laughs> and people will be out and about. Intellect will be increased as well. Finding one's path and destiny will happen for many as they will gain knowledge to do so in this nakshatra. But those who are superficial will be chasing a mirage and will be never satisfied in their life. People will start to meet each other, they'll start to travel again, be social, but people will be suspicious of each other, especially in relationships. Sexual activity will increase. It's good for advertising, good for moving and performing spiritual rituals, especially to the goddesses. Forms of communication will skyrocket. Singers, the music industry, writing, poetry will be enhanced. Fixed opinions and debates will be very popular, probably online. And more homes and real estate will be developed. On November 28th, Jupiter will retrograde back into Rohini. So I'll make a separate video about this when we get to it because it's a little bit far away. Now, some things that happened last time that Jupiter was in Taurus was in 2013. So you could think back, what happened to you in 2013? You're gonna have a lot of these similar things reoccur, themes, and you can choose to do take a different path if you want to. You can learn from the past. This is what we're supposed to do. But the good things will happen. But there are some disasters that did occur and I want to warn you about. Now, in 2013, we had Hurricane Sandy, which was referred to as a superstorm, 
which is an extremely large and destructive category three Atlantic hurricane that ravished the Caribbean, the mid coast Atlantic region of the United States. And this was in 2012. This also affected Canada as well. This was in the US's sixth house at the time when Jupiter was retrograde and in Canada's second house when it was conjunct Venus, which is the second and the seventh house Lord. Another thing that happened in 2012 was when Jupiter was in Canada's second house, it was billed as one of the largest food recalls in Canadian history happened with XL Foods in Brooks, Alberta. They recalled more than 1500 meat products due to E. coli contamination. And the second house is what you consume and it is foods as well. So that's something to watch out for that could reoccur. Also, the owners of the League of the Franchise of the NHL declared a lockout to all the members, and that happened September 16, 2012. While Jupiter was aspecting Canada's sixth house, which is conflict, while the fifth house lord was transiting in the sixth house. So the fifth house is about sports. Also, in 2012, all eyes were on London because there was the 2012 Olympic Games. And this year, it's in Paris, so there'll probably be a lot of protests or worse that can happen in Paris during this time, just because of what we're already seeing happening right now. At that time, Jupiter was in England's ninth house, aspecting the first and the fifth. So that gave it a lot of prosperity, is aspecting the fifth house of sports and itself, and it helped grow its prominence throughout the world, its identity. July 22nd, India's 13th Prime Minister was elected and this year the elections are held in India from April 19th to June 1st. June 1st we will have Mercury, Jupiter, Venus and Sun in the first house conjunct India's natal Rahu which is signaling major unexpected changes to the identity of the country. This will affect the nation as a whole, the social conditions of the country, the united political party, the social ways, the home affairs, the cabinet, the prime minister, and can also signal national disasters as well. And Mars at that time will be at the Gandanta point, conjunct Rahu. So there could be a challenge, there could be some violence that occurs. And I talked about this in my video about the month of May, and I'll talk about that more in June as well. Because Jupiter will be in India's first house, aspecting the ninth house of law, parliament. And Saturn is also transiting its 10th house in Porva Bhadrapada signaling an ending of some kind or death. Something is dying out and then something new is being reborn for India. So that could be a different president. Saturn in Porva Bhadrapada is all about black magic. So I wonder how much black magic is happening right now during the elections to get someone elected. Probably a lot. Jupiter is the lord of its eighth house, which is a deep transformation for India in the first house. It will also conjunct Rahu in the first house, bringing massive change for its identity, like I said, but it must be cautious of greed or corruption. So for the U.S., at the end of 2012, the U.S. debt was $16.5 trillion. That made the debt to GDP ratio 100% higher than any time since World War II. And debt was driven by the government spending and reduced revenue from taxes and thanks to slow economic growth. And the fiscal year of 2012 budget was a deficit of $1.077 trillion. Now, it will be in its sixth house, which is debt. So for the U.S., I see that the debt explodes even more, especially because we're looking back at 2012 and that's what happened. The U.S. has to be careful of debt. Like, this is going to be a good transit for a lot of people. But when it's in the sixth house, it can expand that. It can also expand health problems in the US. And I mentioned that in the eclipse video that there could be some health issues, especially with bird flu coming up. And they've already been talking about that, but hopefully that's not something more because we also have K2 and Virgo as well. And problems with employment because it's aspecting the 12th house of homelessness and immigrants. So there's going to be a lot of issues there with poverty. That's just a little bit of what I see about this Jupiter transit. I will be coming back to talk about it as the year goes on. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one.